Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that will drop. Now let's get started. So we are dealing with the nucleus and related structures okay related structures because they are all part of the main function they are an extension of the major function of the nucleus now look at this cell the nucleus okay it's the largest cell organelle as you can see obvious this is it here okay so it's the chief control center of the cell you can call it the control center of the cell you can also control center information information center okay so we will look at the functions much later but now let's just do a bit of the structure structure then function all right so now look at it very carefully the nucleus has a membrane in fact it's double it's a double membrane now the membrane is called the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope all right so one of them nuclear membrane or envelope all right so next you see within here you see strands red strands they are called chromatin Cro Ma team. I'm going to talk about them individually. Now, there's another structure here, smaller structure that doesn't have a membrane. It's called the nucleus. Number three. Okay, it's called the nucleus. then the plural form is nucleoli Nucle all right nucleoli then as an extension of the membrane of the nucleus you now have another structure if you look at it it's an extension it's called endoplasmic reticulum it's a related structure of the nucleus you see it's it just comes out it's a continuation of the nuclear envelope all right so we're going to write the endoplasmic reticulum it's a separate cell organelle by itself but it's related closely related to the, the the nucleus okay so if you look at again you see a lot of dots and these dots they are a lot of them are connected to this endoplasmic reticulum they are called ribosome 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 all right so i think that is that now what does the nucleus do the nucleus first of all like we said is the information center and wherever you have information okay that's where you have instructions so two major functions of the nucleus number one is that it controls the daily day-to-day -day functions 
of the cell by giving instructions on what the cell should do now i want you to pay attention very carefully one of the underlying principles of the cell is that what that proteins are the functional and structural molecules of the cell pay, listen to very carefully proteins they are the structural and functional molecules of the cell everything about how the cell functions has to do with the activities of proteins so when the nucleus is giving instructions on that direct cellular function it's doing that through proteins in other words the nucleus is the origin of protein synthesis so it wants to influence the function of the cell it does it by instigating protein synthesis that this particular function you need so so and so proteins to carry it out so it starts it kick starts the process of protein synthesis do you understand it now the information center of the cell so now we are going to be looking at how all of that protein synthesis how it relates to endoplasmic reticulum ribosome chromatin and all of that after this break all right you're welcome back so now we're going to be taking it step by step how the nucleus instructs and controls the functions of the cell through protein synthesis now we're going to start from chromatin now as i've said before the chromatin there are these strands okay and what exactly is this chromatin the chromatin is simply dna i'm sure you know about dna dna that's deoxy deoxy ribo nucleic acid okay that's dna the dna itself hmm, it has genes so the dna it's a helical structure double helical structure it has genes and a gene is what codes it codes for certain proteins and of course those proteins code for characteristics of the cell or certain structures and functions of the cell so those information of what should happen structural wise functional wise they are all located in the dna in other words he's saying this type of protein this type of protein billions different types of protein millions and billions of them they are all encoded in dna so those genes they code for protein so that's what the dna contains so the chromatin uh, is simply dna plus protein okay when the protein covers the dna at certain intervals it's now known as chromatin that protein is called histone okay so what happens is that when the cell wants to control the activities of the cell it now synthesizes rna from this dna okay so you have rna which is ribonucleic acid okay so it transfers that information from the gene that it wants into an rna molecule all right so the rna molecule mixed with proteins is what this nucleus is made up of this nucleus is just a pack of a lot of rna and proteins so it's from this nucleus that the ribosome is now produced from so this nucleus is what gives birth 
to these ribosomes okay they come out and they attach themselves to the endoplasmic reticulum so the ribosome is the center of protein synthesis and protein synthesis is simply the information on the kind of protein that should be produced is what is encoded in the dna and it's now not transferred that information to the rna it's called transcription then the rna when it enters when it becomes the ribosome right now begins to assemble amino acids you know proteins they are made up of amino acids amino acids that you take from food when you eat a proteinous food they are broken down to amino acids they enter the cell so it now begins to assemble individual amino acids so the sequence in which it assembles it that determines the type of protein so that's what happens in the ribosome protein so you have you've seen the relationship now so the endoplasmic reticulum the one that has ribosomes attached to it is called rough endoplasmic reticulum okay then you see this another endoplasmic reticulum it doesn't have ribosomes attached to it it is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum it is mainly involved involved in lipid synthesis okay and also some detoxification of substances in the cell okay lipid synthesis the rough one protein synthesis because of the attachment of ribosomes the ribosomes they sit there and do that work of protein synthesis attaching different amino acids in different sequences to lead to a special type of protein that performs a special type of function that's what protein synthesis so the function we've just talked about is gene expression okay the type of protein that should be synthesized that locate is determined by the gene so it expresses that gene to lead to a specific form so that's one of the major functions of the nucleus then the other function is now the transfer of inheritable characteristics this protein synthesis is about day-to-day -day function but this other one it's about reproduction so reproduction happens in at the cellular level and at the systemic whole organism level so at the cellular level it has to do with cell division okay for example if you cut out this cell like this without nucleus it will just die the cell cannot function without nucleus so when a cell wants to divide we there are two major ways mitosis and meiosis okay so but mitosis is more common meiosis has to do with the reproduction the division that happens in the sex cells that is the testes and the ovaries that's where meiosis so but every other cell is mitosis so the nucleus when it wants to divide it will transfer and replicate itself okay which is of course this chromatin that has a dna the chromatin now becomes more tightly packed together with the proteins the dna and the proteins it now we now call it at that point chromosome okay so chromatin chromosome they are they are the same thing it's just how tightly packed it is when it wants to divide so it's the dna replicates itself it that's it generates another exact copy of itself then it now starts dividing okay then one side has another nucleus another side has another nucleus so you now have two nuclei in one cell then later the cell now we're going to deal with that when we talk about the cell cycle so that's one of the things that the nucleus controls cell division it reproduces after itself at the cellular level then when a father or a mother wants to give birth this meiosis takes place half of the dna one is produced then half from the mother is produced so that when intercourse happens and they join together 
it now restores the exact number of chromosome which is 46 in a normal human being so when you divide it becomes 23 23 but in mitosis it still maintains that 46 number of chromosomes okay so it transfers all the inheritable characteristics of the human being so half of all the characteristics that forms a human being is in that chromosome that is transferred to that gamete the sperm so another half is in the egg so when you combine them so every child every person has an equal representation of characteristics from the mother or the father that's why the father okay one a child might look outwardly like the mother but in essence it has exactly the same half of that person is from the mother half is from so that's what the nucleus does inheritable characteristics is the center of heredity all right heredity inheritable characteristic so those are the two major functions of the nucleus heredity and then gene expression protein synthesis that leads to the general functioning of the cell day to day all right so that's what you need to know and you see how it's connected to end endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosome all right so that is what you need to know basically about the nucleus and its related structures so see you in the next video